In the past, conventional heat pump systems were known for their poor efficiency and performance in cold weather temperatures, but that was then. This is today. Mitsubishi Electric Cooling and Heating's revolutionary heat pump technology and our zoned comfort solutions can give everyone in your home total personalized comfort year-round, even in sub-zero temperatures. Here's how they work. Mitsubishi Electric's ultra-efficient heat pump systems consist of an indoor air handling unit and an outdoor condensing unit, which are connected via two refrigerant lines. Together, they work to efficiently transfer the desired cooling or heating energy to your personalized comfort zones. In summer, air conditioning is produced when heat energy from inside your home is absorbed by the system's refrigerant and transferred to the outdoor air. In winter, the refrigerant cycle is reversed, and the system extracts heat from the outdoor air and transfers it inside to heat your home. For those requiring high-performance heating in colder temperatures and climates, our expert engineers have developed hyperheating inverter technology. Our hyperheating outdoor units use an enhanced compressor design to continue extracting heat energy, even when the true outdoor temperature reaches down to negative 13 degrees Fahrenheit. When compared to other fossil fuel burning heating systems, our modern heat pumps provide exceptional heating performance while being a greener, more environmentally friendly option for your home. All of this is possible due to our advanced variable speed inverter compressor technology, which results in our systems using up to 40% less energy than conventional systems. In addition, a single outdoor unit can control up to eight indoor units for added comfort and efficiency with multiple styles available for added versatility. Our indoor units also feature true air filtration for your home, resulting in improved air quality with whisper quiet operation. Perfect for any home, even a baby's nursery. With Mitsubishi Electric Zoned Comfort Solutions, room by room temperature control is at your fingertips. With temperature sensed at each of the indoor units, constant comfort is now a reality. With Mitsubishi Electric Zoned Comfort Solutions, put your comfort in constant cruise control. Our industry-leading, variable-speed, inverter-driven compressor steadily provides precise cooling and heating in each room or zone. Stop guzzling gas with yesterday's technology. Inside, many attractive and discreet indoor unit styles are available. These include wall-mounted, floor-mounted, ceiling recessed, and ducted options. Our advanced filtration is constantly cleaning the air directly in each room or zone. With removable, cleanable filters, a healthier home is within your reach. Clear up the air and make comfort personal. Welcome, my name is Brett Little. I'm the executive director here at the uh, nonprofit, the Green Home Institute. Green Home Institute has a mission to empower people to make healthier and more sustainable choices in the renovation and construction of the places we live. And we've been headquartered right in Grand Rapids uh, since 2000. We're so excited to be bringing you behind the scenes on uh, single family homes, multi-family mixed use, new construction, gut renovations uh, on our green building tours. So I hope you'll join us as we interview uh, architects, uh, builders, homeowners, developers, energy raters, and really ask them questions as to how and why uh, they are committed to uh, green building in their projects. All of our courses are approved for continuing education in GBCI, AIA, HSW, Nary Green, Certified Green Professional, Certified Green Home Professional, BPI Non Whole House, and they may be applicable to your state based design or contractor license. This particular course is also approved for uh, LEED accredited professional in homes. And to get your continuing ed, make sure you take the quiz uh, while you watch the video or after the video and get an 80% passing rate. And don't forget you can always watch any previous videos anytime at our website and our YouTube channel. My name is Peter Scornia. I'm the president of Bazzani Building Company, and we are fortunate enough to work on the Wesner Building in Owasso. From the beginning of the project, helping with securing uh, state historic tax credits, and on through the development and the construction process, and now into operations. Uh, Bazzani Building Company did the first LEED certified building in Grand Rapids and also had the opportunity to do the first LEED certified building in Owasso. Working with Bazzani is, uh, they are the professionals. They know how to get the um, 
the to all the tax credits. I mean, you couldn't do a building like this without help from the state, and um, so you need to have professionals that know how to do all that. And and that's where we we are very thankful that Pisani helped us with this whole process. And yeah, we would do it again. This building was built as a uh, mixed-use residential, and then was in a was in a fire and was damaged. Um, and through the renovation process, we were able to get uh, historic tax credits to help fund the, fund the development, and we chose to do the LEED for Homes certification. With LEED, I think of it as rewarding good behavior. So the, the good behavior that we try to have is um, making for an energy-efficient building. Reusing the existing building is a huge bonus. Uh, rather than starting from scratch, we're able to use most of the existing frame, all of the existing exterior, um, and uh, so you're not you're, you're not using new materials. When we started, the uh, the roof had been essentially a temporary roof put on uh, to protect the building after the fire. There was a there was a fire before it was purchased for this for this use. Uh, so we did end up um, redoing the roof and uh, collecting that storm water and uh, storm water management through the, uh, through the city. It's a pretty tight site. There's uh, basically the building footprint and then a little bit of space in the back. The one issue that we did have through the development process was that, that, that leaky roof on the front, which meant that the, the back of the building, the, the masonry back there was damaged. And that did have to be taken out and replaced and replaced with a masonry wall. But all of that masonry was able to be uh, recycled all of uh, that, rather than going into a landfill. So there was a, a significant amount of structural work associated with being, uh, putting a garage on what before was a uh, retail or storage space. So that floor was taken out, uh, new foundations put in below and a steel subframe and then a concrete floor and uh, provides a place for the garages. But then uh, having, a, having a garage that's at the same level as the, as the retail space, you have to be careful about how the air infiltration is done and uh, that uh, getting uh, carbon monoxide out of that space. So the, uh, the garage itself has to be sealed off from the adjacent retail space and from the, the tenants that live up above. And then with the space that we had in the back, working with the city, we were able to have uh, space for uh, recycling dumpsters and waste collection. So um, uh, it's captured all of, the, all of the wood materials, cardboard, and uh, drywall were all recycled rather than, rather than thrown, in a, thrown in a dumpster. We were able to take an existing building that was otherwise, uh, that was otherwise damaged and, and would have had to have been turn, torn down or would have fallen down getting in at the right time and uh, fixing the problems with the roof and then rebuilding the structure from the inside out, we were able to uh, maintain the, the existing building. With the, uh, with the energy efficiency, we focused on providing a good tight thermal envelope. So with the existing masonry walls on the inside of that is uh, closed cell spray foam insulation and then, and then building in the, the walls in from there. Uh, and securing the, the envelope um, for each apartment uh, by construction of a double wall system between the units helps with the, uh, the energy separation between the units and mostly with sound so that you don't have a, a acoustical issues from, from one tenant to the other. It's, it's on the order of double for the exterior walls where now R19 is required and, our, and we are, um, I think we're R30. Um, and, and then having the spray foam really makes that tight uh, envelope so you don't have air leakage. Um, we used a life breath system for the HVAC, so the, the heating source is shared with the, with the water heater. And then again, having that tight thermal envelope greatly helps with the, with the HVAC system so we're not losing energy through the, through the exterior. So really efficient way to, to get heat into the, into the apartment. But then we also have what's called an ERV, the energy recovery ventilator. So there's, um, there's circulation that happens within the space and that's about 80% of the air in the space gets recirculated. Goes through, a, comes, comes pulled back into the furnace, goes through a filter and then, and then goes out into the space again. 
but for the kitchens and the bathrooms, you don't want to recirculate that area, you want to exhaust it out and get it, get it out of the building. But in the summertime, when you've just uh, expended all this energy to take hot, moist air from outside and turn it into cool, dry air that you'd have in the space, you don't, want to, you don't want to just exhaust that out. So what the energy recovery ventilator does is let that energy that's being exhausted out of the building that comes out of your kitchen and your bathroom, it exchanges that energy with fresh air that comes in. So the hot, moist air is, is bad because you've got to cool it and you've got to dry it, but it's great because it's fresh air. So that fresh air comes in, picks up the energy that's being exhausted out, and uh, it works in the summertime and it works in the wintertime as well. When you have hot, um, hot air that you're exhausting out of the space in the winter, it, that energy is transferred into the cold air that's coming in. So that other 20% of fresh air that you get, rather than starting from scratch directly with outdoor air, you're bringing it uh, in the, uh, the wintertime, you're bringing it up closer to temperature and in the summertime bringing it down prior to the furnace having to work on it. So that in conjunction with the, with the life breath system, it's, a, it's a, a double dip on the energy savings associated with heating and cooling the space. Um, LED lighting, uh, which has become fairly standard on projects now, the cost of LED lighting has come down, but lighting load is, is significantly reduced through that, through that system. Um, and uh, the water, water use reduction in the building through uh, low flow uh, toilets. We use a Coroma toilet, that uh, dual flush system. Um, this is another thing about LEAD of rewarding good behavior. They do a great job of getting into details like that that maybe you wouldn't otherwise think about. Um, but having walk-off mats when you, when you first come into the space that will collect, um, will collect uh, mud, water, dirt, and uh, keep it from going farther into the building and having issues with, with, with building maintenance associated with, uh, with mud and water. Putting in energy efficient windows, allowing natural daylight into the apartments, and then being able to take advantage of the, of the, the east and west exposures for, for daylight access into the building. We sold our home that our family grew up in and um, did, did this building so that we could live here. and. Um, we love the space, we love the efficiency of the, the lead. The green aspects are, are just fantastic with beautiful high ceilings and um, low energy costs and um, the uh, efficiency of the furnace, I guess you would call it, the, the, is, is uh, very ni nicer than anything we, we had previously with the um, in the wintertime, the air is moist. In the summertime, the air is dry. There are six apartments in here and, and then our space, and every unit is sealed. And they actually come with equipment and test the spaces to make sure that they are sealed. And um, being, I was here just about every day. I saw the process. I mean, they, they, the LEED certified is uh, every plug, every possible crack is sealed so that they're, they're very energy efficient and of course in the windows and um, everything that they put in here is geared towards efficiency and that's the, so yes I learned a ton about how what, what's going to have to take place to make a certified a, a lead building and it is of course anything anything quality is costs a little more but the end result is way worth it. We just enjoy um, showing people what can be done because this building was, was a burned out, useless building and um, subject to be torn down. So we're so thankful that we don't have a, a, a hole here or a parking lot in the space. It's, it's a beautiful building with six residents and two um, retail spaces and, and our lovely home. Our space here is as big as my house was. Uh, the Wesner Building is the first LEED certified uh, mixed-use residential building in Owasso. I knew that we would have a challenge educating people in Owasso on LEED certification as it was the first building, of course, that I just mentioned, uh, that has all of the features here. I also knew that we would need to build value of the lifestyle to be able to create an all-encompassing environment to pull in people from different markets to bring them into our downtown. Uh, with that, I focused on our cultural entities, our Steam Railroad Institute, our theater here in town, the walkability of being around the corner from the farmer's market, 
uh, having restaurants within a block, uh, and be able to walk in, make yourself a part of the community. As we uh, reached out and handled all of the marketing of the features of the building, we focused on uh, the energy efficiency, the low water use consumption. We really um, optimized the amount of information that we gave during the construction process of recycling the materials that we took out of the building and how that impacted the overall um, footprint of the property itself. Um, special features like the low E glass on the building to reflect the infrared heat away are just some of the features that we were able to um, explain to the, the new tenants that live here. We've been so blessed with having uh, Albert to run the building who's really passionate about the, uh, the principles that LEED uh, promotes. Um, Albert then passes that on to the tenants uh, to get them excited about it and make sure that they're doing the things that um, that we want them to do as, as tenants in the building. So that's, that's things like having a recycle room on the, uh, on the first floor here where tenants can separate their, their trash, recycle their cardboard, um, uh, as well as uh, uh, cleaning products that are used, and, and how the systems, how the features of the building work, how their thermostat operates, how their uh, um, water heater, utilities, and, and then monitoring their utility bills. Um, I developed a cultural marketing initiative called the Downtown Living Partnership that allowed the new residents who moved into the Wesner to connect directly with buildings or with business owners so that they could introduce themselves and state who they are and where they lived. Um, that was very exciting. Everyone um, received gift certificates and movie passes and were able to be um, a part of the downtown resurgence that we have going on. Our first round of tenants that moved into the property uh, moved inside, uh, or moved to Owasso rather, from 35 to 90 miles away from the city. Every person moved in from outside of Shiawassee County. Uh, that was very exciting. It was a great uh, mixed market of 35 to 65 bracket of retirees, artists, students, etc. Uh, mainly focusing on the activities that uh, happen in Owasso. We have a great river trail uh, that allows you to ride your bikes and run. We also have access for kayaking and canoeing uh, and just being a part of a, the resurgence and revitalization of a historical town in mid-Michigan. Increasing density for residential space is about um, how to get people living in, a, uh, in an urban setting and, and reducing their overall footprint. And by having apartments here, you're getting people in, living in town, using the services that are in town, and they work off of one another. Having a farmer's market but that's, uh, that's walkable for the residents here, it helps both sides. It's a wonderful thing for the residents to have of uh, things that they can walk to, and then for those businesses to be able to take advantage of uh, the residents right in town. The city had been a good partner with uh, working with us on a parking plan and Albert has continued to work with the city on maintaining that balance of all the little details associated with uh, uh, people living in the city. Even for a smaller town like Owasso, um, there, are, uh, there are differences from that, from uh, people that are moving in from the suburbs or moving in from the country. You have access to the, everything that's downtown, the post office. The, we don't have a grocery store, but we have a little party stores and anything you need is pretty much walkable. We have wonderful restaurants downtown. Um, all the events are downtown. We have a farmer's market that's right around the corner. Um, of course, that's just from May to October. Um, in the wintertime, we, uh, we have parades. In the summertime, we have parades. We can open our window and, and uh, watch it from our home. Every building has its own unique features. I, this wasn't so much a design element, but I think one of the fascinating things with, uh, uh, about this building was the, was the basement that was originally, Owasso had um, uh, storefronts down on the lower level that connected out to a, I guess you'd call it a tunnel system underneath the, underneath the sidewalk. Um, and there was a haberdashery here at one point from the reality of that turned into some can contamination in the ground when we um, got the project. Uh, and that's, that's part of dealing with an old building. You're, you're, you're gonna have some issues like that, uh, but, but the opportunities that come from it are just, just far outweigh the, uh, the disadvantages.